On the way out of the village, on the beach opposite St. Joseph's Bay, stands the last outrigger canoe building operation in New Caledonia. No machines or blueprints here. Everything is made by hand, following ancestral techniques. Are you okay, Joseph? Yes. We've made progress. Alexander is doing all the work. Sure, it's his canoe. And the elders are better workers. He has to work, it's his. <laughs> Mark, you can yell the war cry. That's it. Joseph, you really build light. <laughs> The Barraway is constructed following very specific guidelines. Every gesture, every technique is the fruit of ancestral know-how. Why is a fire set in the dugout? It's a way of treating the wood. Setting a fire heats up the wood and drives out any insects. And to hollow out the wood? Yes, it hollows out the hull. So you heat up the canoe, then scrape off the charred wood. We learned from our uncles because we lost our father when we were young. We were really young at that time. We would come along when we knew some of the elders were working on a canoe. We watched, then asked questions. It's burning on the side too. Is that normal? Well, when the flame spills out, you use the brush to throw a little water on it. Joseph is a good teacher. <laughs> I think so, because he has two canoes of his own now. Otherwise, it would mean he hadn't learned anything. For the Canax, the Berryway is more than just a boat. It is the glue that binds together members of the clan, forging their identity and asserting their rights over the ocean. We head off with Mike and Octave. Tonight, a celebratory meal is planned in the village to honor Alexander and his canoe. We navigate along the island's coast without any map or compass. It's a pleasure to be carried by the breeze. Oktav knows every inch of the lagoon, the currents, the creeks, and the reefs where the fish are. Those potatoes out front. Potatoes? The dark spots that you see there. In fact, the fish are around the potatoes. It's their refuge. We'll pick out a group of potatoes and then cast the net. All around. That's right. Come on, make some noise. Does beating the water drive the fish away? Precisely. Mike's got it all down. Beating the water drives the fish away. It leaves this potato and moves on to the next. At which point they get caught in the net. Exactly. The sea is like our food store, like uh, an earth mother, meaning it complements what we find on land. We do everything to protect it so that future generations can enjoy its benefits the same way that we do. Ah, 
nice little dawa. Great. There you go. So do we have enough fish for a bunya? Mm-hmm, plenty. A bunya doesn't need a lot of fish, just to give it flavor. You drench it in coconut milk, and you're done. Today, it is the turn of Oktav's family to prepare the bunya for the whole clan. The men take care of the fire, while the women do the cooking. In Kanak society, a woman's place is subject to precise rules. You put that in the middle. Like this? Yes. That way it's you who prepared the fish bunya. It's going to be delicious. The nice thing is it's so colorful. Less so once it's cooked, but anyway. <laughs> That's fine. Is it? So the vegetables will soak it up? That's right. How long does it take to cook? Two hours in a traditional oven. Is it only women who do the cooking? The men help out too. They cut the meat, the roast. On the other hand, only the men go fishing. The men do all the fishing, because sometimes the women go along. And the men don't catch any lobster or fish. That's why they aren't allowed to go. They bring bad luck. Is it just an excuse for men to be together? Yes, but sometimes they go, oh, we didn't catch any lobster. Well, you should have taken us along. Maybe the luck is with us. <laughs> Would you like things to change, for women to be allowed to go fishing? No, things are fine as they are. It's the custom. Custom is the law that governs relations between clans, as well as births, marriages, and when to harvest. It is the pillar of Kanak society. I wanted to thank you all for helping me cut the tree. It's important for the clan to be gathered together. Thank you all very much. I wanted to thank you all because this has been so fulfilling for me. It means a lot to me to have so many generations present. I saw Joseph at work and was very impressed. We can see how much expertise is required. He is still the patriarch, and young people are going to have to work a little harder. Right, Mr. Mike? And I couldn't help notice that you had a small chainsaw, while your father had the big one. So next time I come, I expect you to have the big chainsaw. Anyway, thanks for everything. You've come a long way, so this canoe will bear your name as a souvenir of your time on the Isle of Pines. I'm very flattered. A small part of me will remain here. This will be one very fast boat. It's going to be a racing canoe. Alexander's hair will be swept back on his head. <laughs> Thank you, Alexander. I'm a guest. I don't want to ruin dinner. It's like a pot au feu. Yes, it's like a pot au feu, like a beef stew. Bon, bon appétit, quand même. Voilà, bon appétit. This is yam, right? Yes. I love yam. What's great is having all the ingredients together, with all of the flavors mingling together. Go! 
The canoes built by Mike and his father are a link between past and present, mapping out a future in which the wind of Kanak culture and identity will continue to blow across the lagoon.